when you did the survey with Matt, Matt Heinz, when you looked at the results, uh, what are three things that uh, really dropped your jaw? Companies that invest in sales training are seeing the results in their organization, right? And the reason I say it's a little jaw dropping is that I feel like we've always looked at sales training and enablement as this thing of, well, yeah, we need to invest in that. There's varying levels of yes, how much of it is lip service versus how much they actually mean it. And I think one of the most jaw dropping stats was that 78% of sales teams with an effective sales training program see their teams hitting 100% of their quota. The second one is that we found that 88% of teams that define KPIs for their sales training programs hit at least 75% of their quota. What that's telling me is that the best in class organizations out there, when they're looking at things like sales coaching, they're looking at it from the perspective of how do we, we know a generic training experience doesn't make sense for each individual seller. We have to look at a deep level at how the things we train against match up against the ultimate KPIs we care about, which is obviously closed one and revenue. I'd say the third piece that was pretty interesting to me was that eight out of 10 teams who cite effective sales coaching practices hit about 75% of their quota. The fact that they're saying 75 is very telling because they're showing that, hey, if we just do the, if we invest in sales coaching, make it part of our culture, it's already raising companies to a level that is better than most. When you look at the numbers for, for coaching versus the number for training and, mm -hmm. uh, and the combined coaching and training, uh, mm -hmm. is there even a higher outcome? The higher outcome that I see with this report overall is that it is no longer good enough for sales management to kind of stay on the sidelines of readiness and seller preparation in general. VPs of sales, regional VPs of sales, directors of sales are being asked to get in front and center um, into um, the, the construct of readiness and getting their sellers um, in the right place to go out and perform and exceed their quota, they're actually very much have to lean in hard to curriculum, understand what are the skill sets I'm trying to deliver to my reps, and I need to take the ownership uh, of making sure this happens. And, and to me, that's like the biggest thing around this report. We need more conversation leaders and a good conversation leader selects the right topic. So let's talk about the KPI. So let's talk about the training and how can I enhance that training in addition to the sales enablement efforts that are made in the company, or how can I become a better coach? And I think that would drive effectiveness in any company. What's happening in a lot of sales organizations is the profile of a sales manager in the background is starting to evolve or change a little bit. To use a sports analogy, which we often see, right, is like you're seeing more player-friendly coaches we're going to see more and more um, chief revenue officers who really have a deep background in data and analysis, not just the yeah. core selling. You know, another thing I think is is super critical um, is around this call it to mid to high level sales management at some of these larger companies. I, I feel like it's always been an underutilized resource where you know they're really at the front lines of kind of understanding what's actually happening in the field. Um, we earlier this year launched a product called um, Conver Call AI, which is our conversation intelligence capability, right? So it, it allows you as, as sellers are using Zoom or one of these products to go in and actually record the conversation, make an understanding around themes, topics, et cetera. And I think that type of technology development is such a huge um, upside for sales management because now they can actually see what's being applied or not applied based on the coaching um, that they're being given um, in a way that maybe wasn't available, say, five, 10 years ago, where it was sort of like, well, we train, we coach, and then we kind of just get the anecdotal story later, either based on what's filed in the CRM system or, or what we hear in the sales meeting.
Well, Chris, I could go on for a long time. You, uh, uh, you and uh, your company, MindTickle, you are a treasure trove of information. And I invite anybody who is listening to that to go to their website and uh, specifically download the new sales enablement standard. Is there anything else uh, you can add that uh, people can see on mindtickle.com? I'd also encourage them to check out our sales readiness framework. What we tried to put through the framework is, is sort of a way for organizations that want to do more around readiness to kind of have a starting point in terms of how they brainstorm and bring some of these ideas up within their company. So I just want to thank you so much for, for having me on today. It's been been a blast. Well, you're awesome. Thank you, Christopher. Christopher.